in this episode. What is the guarantee that one can give that the colors in my image are accurate? It's practically impossible to guarantee that, right? But we have a way out and that actually becomes the basic point of using a gray card. Can we actually gauge the RGB values of a particular color? Yes, if you have the software for it, yes, you can gauge it. All the colors in a digital system are actually a combination of only three colors. So irrespective if it's white, gray, green, yellow, blue or red, it is actually a combination of three primary colors and those three colors are... The first thing that I'm going to be doing is record a black and white image to be sure that uh, I am accurate when it comes to value of that particular tooth. During this entire process, grey card is of no use at all. So when is the grey card helpful? And that is an 18% neutral grey card. The 18% neutral grey card, for those who don't know, is actually a part of the magic box. I'm going to open this particular image on my image editing software, but I'll be opening the raw file. But since it was not 118, 118, 118, it was 120, 120, 120, means there was a color cast. So what is a color cast? For example, if I go into a restaurant which has tungsten lighting, which has a light bulb, and if I'm wearing a white color shirt, if I take a picture of myself with my mobile phone or a DSLR actually, without adjusting the white balance, the picture is going to show that I'm wearing an off-white or a yellowish kind of a shirt. The catch point over here is not only does your digital screen need to be calibrated, but even your lab's digital screen has to be calibrated. You're listening to the Dental Photography School podcast where I'll be sharing practical tips on clinical and general photography. I'm Dr. Mayur Daoda and I've been coaching dentists and dermatologists on clinical photography since 2013. Apart from the cheek retractors, mirrors and contrasters, we have one more very important intraoral accessory that we rarely speak about and it's available in the magic box actually. And that particular accessory is very useful for shade communication. Can you guess what accessory I'm talking about? It is of course the grey card. In this episode, I'm going to be speaking about what is a grey card and how to use it. So what is a grey card? In the world of photography, the neutral grey color is considered as a standard color. Not just any neutral grey, it has to be an 18% neutral grey card. A grey card could be available in any format. It could be available as an 18% neutral grey paper or it could be an 18% neutral grey card which looks like a credit card size card and it's available in the magic box. But how do we actually use it? And does the grey card have any role to play in the shade selection process? That's the question we need to ask. Now coming right into the answer. Before I actually give you the answer to that, we need to understand a little bit of a background of the coloring systems or the coloring gamut in digital technology. When we look at our screen or the mobile phones, there are so many colors available uh, on a TV screen, on our mobile phone gadgets or our tablets, our desktop screen, our PC's monitor. But you need to understand that whatever colors are available, they are actually not individual colors like in acrylic paints that I buy, they are individual colors. But in a digital system, it's not like that. We need to understand that all the colors in a digital system are actually a combination of only three colors. So irrespective if it's white, gray, green, yellow, blue or red, it is actually a combination of three primary colors and those three colors are red, green and blue. You might have heard of RGB. So RGB is nothing but red, green and blue. These are the primary colors in the digital system and all the other systems 
and all the other colors are actually a combination of how much is red in that particular color or how much green in that particular color or how much is blue in that particular color let me give you an example of that if the r is 0 g is 0 and b is 0 the resultant color that we get is black if r is 255 g is 255 and b is 255 the resultant color is white so every color that you can actually think of say turquoise it will have a fixed rgb value and where are these values stored it's actually stored in that digital system can we actually gauge the rgb values of a particular color yes if you have the software for it yes you can gauge it so there is a particular tool to gauge and it's called as a white balance tool whenever you select the white balance tool on a particular software it's going to measure the rgb values at any particular point of an image let me take an example of an editing software like canon's digital photo professional this is a free editing software and any canon user can download it for free from any of the canon websites out there just google digital photo professional and you'll be able to download this particular software for free so what is this particular software actually used for this software is actually used for editing the raw files of a particular camera in canon uh, so if you are a Nikon user, you'll have to download Nikon's View NX2 or Nikon's Capture NXD. But if you do not want any proprietary software, we have softwares like Adobe's Camera Raw, Adobe's Lightroom, which is also capable of editing raw files. So once you've downloaded any particular software of your choice, just open the software and open any raw file in that particular software. Raw files are the digital negatives. Uh, sometimes they have a file extension of .dng. In Canon, it's .cr2 or .cr3. And in Nikon, it's .nef. So just open any images raw file in that particular proprietary software. Just keep in mind that Canon software cannot open Nikon's files and vice versa. So let me give you an example that I am trying to open a .cr2 file. I have to use the Canon's Digital Photo Professional. Once I open Canon's RAW file on Canon's Digital Photo Professional system, I have a lot of options available to edit. But let's get back right to the gray card topic once again. Right now, I'm not trying to edit any particular image. Uh, if I actually move the cursor on my image, on any particular point, it's going to be showing me the RGB values. And it's going to tell me, what is the RGB value of any particular color that my mouse pointer is pointing at? Now let's jump back to the gray card. Um, since white has a definite RGB value, black also has a definite RGB value. Similarly, gray also has a definite RGB value. Let's just say for example, the value of 18% uh, neutral gray is 118118R, 118G and 118B. This is just a random example. I'm just giving you an example that the standard values of RGB for an 18% neutral gray card is R118, G118 and B118. If I now take an image with my camera, be it any camera of the world, let me take an example that I'm using Canon 6D for taking an image. Now my question to all the listeners is, although I'm going to be using a DSLR camera, the best possible lens best possible flash for dental photography and keep the best possible settings for colors what is the guarantee that one can give that the colors in my image are accurate it's practically impossible to guarantee that right but we have a way out and that actually becomes the basic point of using a gray card so the basic point of using a gray card is that um, if we are taking an image we can never be sure if the colors have been recorded accurately or not so if you are to communicate to a dental laboratory, we want to communicate an image with accurate colors, which we are obviously doubtful of because we can never be sure if we have recorded the right colors in any particular system. Hence, during the shade communication process, we actually use the gray card to remove any color cast or remove any confusion if we have accurate colors in an image or not and that's possible with the help of 
and 18% neutral grey card only. So let me give you an example so that you understand how the entire process goes about. Let us say that I have to give a prosthesis for 1-1, that's the first quadrant central incisor. I'm going to be selecting the shade looking at the second quadrant central incisor. The first thing that I'm going to be doing is record a black and white image to be sure that uh, I am accurate when it comes to value of that particular tooth. After I've selected the value, I'll go ahead and select the actual shade tab. During this entire process, gray card is of no use at all. So when is the gray card helpful? When I'm sure that I've selected the right color for my particular patient uh, in which I'm going to be replacing the 1-1 one -one, uh, or I'm going to be putting a crown on 1-1 one -one, or a laminate on 1-1, one -one, what I'll do is I'll be keeping the shade tab in the same plane as that of 2-1. But I'll be also keeping one more thing along with the shade communication picture that I'm going to be shooting now. And that is an 18% neutral grey card. The 18% neutral grey card, for those who don't know, is actually a part of the magic box and can also be purchased separately. But you have to be very careful that it's an 18% neutral grey card only. Okay, so now coming back to our patient. I'm going to be shooting a picture with 2-1 and the shade tab in the same plane. I'm also going to keep a grey card next to it. So now I have a picture with 2-1, my shade tab and a grey card. So what do I do with it? So my question obviously is, I'm not really sure if the colors in this particular picture are accurate or not. So what do I do to remove this particular confusion? I'm going to open this particular image on my image editing software, but I'll be opening the raw file. So let's just say the image is say xyz.cr2. That's Canon's raw file and I'm going to open it in Canon's digital photo professional. Once I open it, I have a tool called as a white balance adjustment tool or a white balance tool. I just have to simply click on that tool on that button. And as soon as I click on it, as soon as I press that button, you will appreciate that your mouse pointer will turn into a dropper when you take the mouse pointer on your image. Basically, the software is telling you to point out where is the 18% neutral gray color. As soon as you take the mouse pointer onto the 18% neutral gray color, you don't have to click anything. Just get the mouse pointer on the gray card. It's going to measure the RGB values on that particular point. Now what it's going to do is it's going to calculate what is the RGB values. Just for an example, if the RGB values that it calculated was R120, G120 and B120. But didn't we say that the standard values for the gray card was 118, 118, 118? That means the image that we have taken into the software does not have accurate colors because there is a difference between the standard and the picture that we have shot with respect to the 18% neutral gray color. So what will the white balance adjustment tool do is if we click on the ideal neutral 18% gray card at a place where the gray card is very accurate in the sense it should not have any shadows or reflections. I have to select the best part of the gray card if I want to actually use the white balance adjustment tool. Once I have selected the ideal part of the gray card, I realize that the value of RGB is 120, 120, 120 means there's a difference of 2 in R, G and B. That means there's a total difference of 2 into 3 because difference of 2 in R, difference of 2 in G, difference of 2 in B. So the total difference is actually 6, 6. Okay, so what the white balance adjustment tool will do, if I click on that particular point, it's going to remove 2 from R, 2 from G and 2 from B, thereby converting the R to 118, G to 118 and B to 118. But here is the most important thing. It's not only going to apply this change to that particular point, but it's going to apply this particular change in the entire image, thereby removing any kind of inconsistency when it comes to a confusion if the colors are accurate or not. So when I click on that particular point, the RGB values of gray in that particular point will become 118, 118, 118, and it's going to remove two from R, G, and B from each and every pixel of that particular image, thereby making the image very color accurate. In other words, it's going to remove any color cast that would have been there in that picture. 
So did the picture have a color cast? Yes. If the image did not have a color cast, the RGB values on the ideal point of the neutral gray card would have been 118, 118, 118. But since it was not 118, 118, 118, it was 120, 120, 120, means there was a color cast. So what is a color cast? A color cast is something that's going to make our image look different with respect to what our eyes are perceiving. So you might have appreciated a color cast as well many a times in your life. For example, if I go into a restaurant which has tungsten lighting, which has a light bulb, and if I'm wearing a white color shirt, if I take a picture of myself with my mobile phone or a DSLR actually, without adjusting the white balance, the picture is going to show that I'm wearing an off-white or a yellowish kind of a shirt. But our brain does not process this like that. Our brain is still going to process that I'm wearing a yellow shirt. But if you are actually literally looking at that picture only, then you can appreciate that the shirt is actually not looking white. It's actually looking yellowish or off-white. So although I was wearing a white shirt, but in the image, my shirt is looking like slightly yellowish. That means the image has a yellow color cast. If you want to make it back to white, the best possible technique is to use an 18% neutral gray card. And that's what we did in the example that we spoke about. So once I have corrected the picture of laminate on one one or a crown on one one, the example that we spoke about, we have a color corrected image now. So all we have to do is go to the file menu, convert this raw file to a JPEG file or a TIFF file, depending upon what you want to use it for, and then send it across to your lab in any way, like a digital way or a printout, whatever you think you want to give it across. I would prefer anyways but if it's a digital system the screen also has to be mon the screen the digital screen also has to be calibrated for accurate colors which will be a totally different topic in our forthcoming podcast episodes for that particular topic we'll be using an a hardware called as the spider which i use every time to calibrate all my digital screens but the catch point over here is not only does your digital screen need to be calibrated, but even your lab's digital screen has to be calibrated. In material, if you're using a Windows computer or a Mac, all your digital systems have to be color calibrated. That's possible with the help of a spider, which we'll be speaking about in our forthcoming episodes. Hopefully, this particular podcast on gray card would have been helpful to you. I'm sure you might have a lot of confusion because this is a little tricky topic. I've covered this particular topic on a blog on my website called dentalphotographyschool.in. Do check out the blog and if you still have questions, please feel free to write to me on info at dentalphotographyschool.in. I request all the listeners uh, that if you have questions, do not connect with me on a private chat on Instagram or WhatsApp because it becomes really cumbersome to answer hundreds of queries. The best way to connect with me would be on email or comment on the podcast episode that you are listening to. I'll be looking forward to hear from you. If you're liking the Daniel Photography School podcast, please make sure to give it a review and a rating on the podcasting platform of your choice. But the best platform is Podchaser because not only will you be able to comment and review on my podcast, but every time I upload a new episode, you'll be getting an email as well. I'll be looking forward to hear from you. Till then. That's all we have time for in this episode. If you are getting benefited from my tips, do show your love by leaving a rating and a review. For tutorials on photography, do check out my channel, Dental Photography School on YouTube. To participate in contests and live events, join the Dental Photography School Facebook and Telegram group. You can follow me on Instagram as mayur underscore EOS Maestro or Dental Photography School. I'll meet you next week. Till then, keep listening, keep sharing.